Hello SGD and let's look at saw marks and this is one of the key arguments presented by Christopher Dunn, Uncharted X, Brian Foster, Bright Insight and uh, Yusef Iowan and just the, in general the lost ancient high technology community and so for instance at Abu Si we see a, I'm pretty sure this one's granite uh, block, this might be a basalt, looks like granite but evidence for lost ancient high technology giant powered circular saws because it, it, it hasn't been explained it's impossible okay so let's look at this block so what we have is a curved cut so the blue line well is straight and you can follow that and it's a curved line therefore advanced ancient lost high technology with diamond and steel and or some exotic materials it's impossible with pri with primitive technologies can't be replicated etc etc uh, so here we see another example this is a basalt block from Abu Si again the black line just to highlight the straight and this is a curved cutting edge must be a steel powered advanced technology circular saw mark can't be explained so for instance uh, here's a quote from Uncharted X this video goes back some time but he hasn't left these arguments behind he still promotes these so quote the very f tiny thin width of the blade is indicated by the lip at the edge of his cut makes it nothing short of impossible impossible that such a saw could have been made by a soft material like copper or bronze and still managed to cut through basalt and again where does he get the impossible from okay that's his claim now when we what's he talking about well there's this thin edge here and that copper could not do this now a uh, recent podcast on concrete concrete again uh, striations are perfect spirals and this can't be done with copper look at the thin edge it can't be done so i'm not just picking on something he said years ago and has since aborted still selling it now brian foster still selling the argument that uh, you need diamond technology to cut these and it can't be done with copper so they're saying it's impossible that's the basis of their argument. And we see these striation marks. So this is clearly being cut by a blade with a very distinctive circular arc to it. It left obvious striations and grooves in its passing, indicating a very rapid rate of cutting through this very hard material and a bit of water poured over the blocks shows these marks very clearly. So again, that the striation marks, whether it's in the cores or on the blocks, indicate that each line, each striation is like one movement of the saw. Again, this is what they're still saying now. And then we have, or well, this is unexplained. So on that earlier first block with the curve, we have these little shelves, little lips uh, in there. And we'll come back to that later. Because uh, again, just Christopher Dunn and then while looking at these, their argument destroys itself. But these are unexplained and, and no modern power tools, you know, can we need modern power tools to do this ancient tools don't cut it they, they don't replicate the marks well this is just it was wrong in the past now it's a lie because they know it is and they still sell the same um argument and they're going on with it and well all right so let's look at some actual real world evidence uh both ancient and how it applies to the modern world and i've got three spots ephesus and heriopolis in modern day turkey and jeresh in modern day Jordan which all have ancient technology uh, so go back to the Roman era so let's begin with the Ephesus saw so we still have these this pit here now I'll show you a little bit better but basically they it's an old stone working facility where they were cutting stone and more imp interestingly again just like the Romans did with uh, grain mills and other places Instead of manually powered, they had water wheels powered by aqueducts to turn the machines. On the left-hand side, an old-fashioned black and white era, but this, these tools called gang saws are still used. It's basically, it's a, a blade. Now, they're gonna use iron. And if you've got a kitchen granite bench top, it was probably cut with a gang saw, such as this gang saw, because there's a gang of them. Uh, a pull saw, if it's single. So whether it's powered by water or electricity or by manual, it's still operating exactly the same, but also at essentially the same speeds because the speed that this saw moves is not a million revs per, per minute. 
the modern ones are still doing at a speed which a hand operator could still go. And there's a, um, well, we'll cover those, but let's just go for it first, okay. So on the left, we can see a modern gang saw and a modern version of a gang saw blades, which now have these diamond tooth segments attached to them. So instead of like the older saws, which just had a steel or an iron blade and used loose abrasive, well, they still use, but now the more modern ones have diamond little teeth attached to it. But this ancient side is also a gang saw. A single blade still cuts very slow. Now, depending on which era and what model you're using, it could be from two centimeters to maybe five centimeters an hour in, in between there. All right, now let's look closely at this. And so what we have is a gang saw. We have at least four blades running simultaneously. So you can again see those grooves, at least two blades running simultaneously on either side here at Ephesus on the block that's left cutting slabs. Uh, here also, it, so there we see a close-up picture of it, and had a blade running through there and a blade running through there. And we also have this column, which has the two blades running. They're cutting a slab from this old column piece. So if you want to increase your speed, add another blade, double your speed. All right, here's a model reconstruction of the Ephesus saw. And we'll come back to it. Okay, so here's an animation um, of that saw, again, powered by a water wheel. We'll just keep going, I'll show you some of the actual physical reconstructions. Now notice in the middle there are two blades. So on either side there's that wooden frame and there are two blades running in the middle. A water wheel with a crank arm is, the circular motion is turned into a linear motion, pulling it back and forth. The water not only turns the wheel, it's also pouring over the blades. Um, that you use water to create those striations is an important feature. Here's a replica, so instead of a water wheel, again, now we're just using an electric motor. Again, it's not turning at super high revs, it's the same that would a um, hand operated as well. And in a moment you can see that they're gonna be hand operating these as well. So the water wheel feature is really irre irrelevant to the larger scheme of things because it can be powered by hand and it's running at the same optimal speed, it's not super fast. You pour water and you add sand, it's an abrasive. So just think sandpaper. Paper doesn't cut, it's the sand that cuts. The paper is just there to push the sand down. They've also got curved blades, we'll come back to that. And also this abrasive which is running out, well they're just letting it drip down because they're just doing an experiment. But as we'll see in more modern gang saws, they collect that slurry and then they put it back into the machine. And so, and this is also, it's a swing saw because it's on ropes and it's swinging and it's one of the uses for the curved blade. We'll come back to that in a moment, but uh, here's just that reconstruction, uh, cutting two blades at once, you should be able to get it, okay. All right, so firstly, before we go any further, how do ancient tools, hand-powered, ancient water-powered tools or modern electric-powered tools work? How do they actually cut? Let's go back to Book 36, Natural History by Pliny the Elder. The division, though apparently affected by the aid of iron, is in reality affected by sand. The saw acting only by pressing upon the sand with a very fine cleft in the stone and it is moved to and fro. He also then goes on to describe the trade, international trade in sand, which is basically corundum uh, and high grade abrasives to cut. Uh, Naxos stone, which is emery, but whether from India, Egypt, uh, Naxos, uh, also in the Adriatic, but important thing, to cut stone, still now, as it was then, it's not the iron that does the cutting, it's not the steel that does the cutting, it's the sand, the abrasive, the sand cuts, not the paper. So, yeah, okay, that's the first thing. Now, if you've ever listened to Lost Ancient High Technologists, it's not that they don't know what they're talking about, is that they lie about these things because this, this has been brought to their attention and even though in the past this could have been their own error and they didn't know, but that they're still saying it is proof positive that they're lying about this information and they don't want you to know because it will pull the rug from underneath their house of cards to mix metaphors. So modern tools, on the left, uh, masonry cutting disc, it's basically uh, either silicon carbide or corundum. 
and it's just glued together and there's just a, a fibre mesh holding it together because it's not not the mesh that cuts it's the sand that's in there and this works exactly like a diamond edge masonry cutting wheel so the steel is there just to the edge is diamond and the steel is just there to spin the thing around it's not the steel that cuts it's the diamond just like it's not the paper that cuts it's the sand stuck to the paper uncharted x brian foster they know this by now in uh in case of brian foster first he said it then he got uh embarrassed by it and then he sort of started moving away and just in recent uh, couple weeks he's gone back to it well you need diamond to do these things he's a liar so those are discs but so gang saws so where you're cutting in a straight line uh, the fancy modern gang saws have got the diamond teeth segments attached to it because it's the diamond that cuts the steel is just there to push the diamond aka sand abrasive against it old school in the middle uh, old school just iron steel blades with loose abrasive or on the bottom cutting with a copper blade and loose abrasive it's not the steel it's not the, well, the iron it's not the copper i've drilled in plastic as well said so plastic can cut wood can cut it's the sand that's there so again it's not the paper it's the sand that does the cutting this is just a fact uh, the lost ancient high technologists simply can't take a step backwards because then again the house of cards would collapse so here's another beautiful one that they still keep using and this is Moe's hardness scale uh, again just recently Uncharted X again of a granite statue on Moe's Moe's okay let's just go Moe's scale is it's a relative scale so diamond is 10 because 10 is the highest and not because diamond is well and then we go down further and further so what is most scale it's basically a very simple test you get two minerals you rub them against one another which one scratches the other means it's harder diamond being the hardest known because diamond scratches everything most scale has nothing zero to do with hammers or pounders or chisels So let's look now, because of the silica, basically the sand content of glass, window glass has the same Mohs hardness as kitchen utensils, mild steel, knives. Now, if I was to take a steel utensil and bang it against a piece of glass, it's not going to work. You know, the glass is going to break, even though they're the same Mohs hardness. If I was to take a piece of copper or limestone, which is down on three on the most scale and go against glass, the glass would break. If I made a glass hammer, which is harder than limestone, or a glass chisel, which is harder than limestone, or copper, it's not gonna work. Glass is harder than copper, glass is harder than, than limestone, glass is harder than calcite. And uh, so again, this has, whether it's a, a dollarite pounder, a steel hammer, a bronze hammer, it doesn't matter. Mo's hardness scale is zero to do with hammers or chisels or pounders, but lost ancient high technologists still perpetuate this lie to make themselves sound sciencey. Oh, it's higher on Mo's scale. Therefore, that can't be done. It's science. All right, it is. It's ridiculous. Now, what is actually Mo's scale really important for? It's basically you would use Mo's scale to define what you would want to use as sandpaper or cutting discs or as cutting blades. No, rule number one in Mo's scale like cuts like brian foster oh you need diamond you need something harder to cut granite if that was the case then how do they cut and polish diamonds oh, okay. so it, it's it's just silly and he knows it's silly but he knows that this lie works very well to his uh, audience and so he keeps perpetuating this lie he is a fraud he is a liar um now granite granite is depend depending on the minerals so granite or limestone or sandstone truly don't have a Mohs hardness it's the mineral in the granite that defines it granite is a mix of minerals sandstone is a mix of minerals limestone is a mix of minerals so you have different samples will have different proportions some will have different uh, so but granite let's just say six and a half right? diorite is actually a little bit lower so it's a harder stone to work but it is less hard on most scale. Uh, andesite or basalt is the same thing. Uh, they have less 
Granite gets its hardness because it, ha it has a high proportion of quartz in there. Quartz is up on seven on the most scale. Now quartz, you get a quartz crystal and you bang it with even limestone, a softer rock, it's gonna break. Okay, so again, the, the way that they use this is just wrong, wrong, and they know, and important, we've got to say it again, after years and years of even when you try and be polite and correct them, they're still selling this lie because all of their previous books and videos and tours would be invalid. They can't do that, it would destroy their business model, it is a business. Uh, sandstone. Sandstone is at least or harder than granite on most scale. Even the most crumbliest weak sandstone that you can crush in your fingers. Like cuts like sandstone has more quartz than granite and also will have a decent percentage of corundum. So sandstone is harder than that. Don't believe what they're saying. Plain old sand, crushed sandstone is more than enough to cut, polish, drill in granite. I've done the experiments, playlist in the description to all of them. You're willing, uh, you're free to replicate them and all of the supporters of Lost Ancient High Technology are, are invited to do a live stream and we can, even in one or two hours, we can do a lot of proof of concept work, but they won't come on there. Crushed sandstone, excellent to cut granite. Crushed granite is ex excellent to cut granite. Quartz, even better. All right, so like cuts like, otherwise diamond could not be cut, polished, and all those type of things. So this is how it actually works when you're talking about cutting or drilling or polishing, it's basically sandpaper. You need a equal or better, you could even do it with a lesser, but to be efficient, modern, this is modern technology, and this is ancient technology. Okay, so back to this Ephesus saw. And also mention, so you can, as experiments have shown, if you drill or cut dry, you get a different results in your striation pattern and what you do if you lubricate it with water or with oil. And so, so not just the water was feeding the wheel, also proposed, you know, because of the evidence, uh, that they were using that to also feed into the cutting mechanism. Now the benefit of this, even though it would be an expensive thing to make, uh, was that you only needed one labourer to keep feeding the sand into the machine instead of having a team of labourers to push the saw back and forth manually. Okay, the Heriopolis saw. Uh, the, the inscription, again, you can look it up. So the guy who designed this is this lovely inscription describing it and like the master of wheels and circles as an engineer. Let's just highlight that a little bit more. So what we have is a big wheel being fed by water to turn the big wheel. This big wheel with a crank turns this wheel. This wheel is a gear, turns these. This wheel had a crank and this pushes these. So we have a saw on this side and a saw on that side. And this, again, the circular motion gets cranked through the crank. It's turned into a linear back and forth motion. And it was, a ma instead of manually powered by people, it was powered by a water wheel. There's a, a illustration just to show so again now how do you turn a circular motion into a straight one where well, you have this crank and as it goes around it pulls back and then it pushes forward pulls back that's how it worked we had two saws cutting on either side so just a comparison of the inscription and the drawing relief carving and how it is now let's have a look so this is a uh, animation of it this particular one he's he's going to be cutting wood but from the evidence, the left the pieces of stone that were partially cut, we know that they were also cutting stone. So whether this was used in sawmills as well, well, why not? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, but they were cutting stone with these. And this is just, just to show the principle of, of how it works. It's a water wheel, circular motion get through the crank, it's transferred into yeah, back and forth motion. Okay, why is that? Uh, all right. That's an ancient gang saw powered by a water wheel. You could have had one, and I'm sure they were powered by men. Depends if the owner wants to invest in building a machine, and because not everyone's got the privilege of having an aqueduct down to their factory. His, this is a modern gang saw, it's exactly the same thing. Big wheel, crank, 
the arm goes back and forward, it pushes these blades back and forward. These have diamond segment teeth, but in the old times, even some places probably still don't have them because these blades are expensive um, and will still be economic to use just iron blades. I'll show you that in a moment. All right, here's just some footage of a gang saw in motion. Again, you can see big wheel turns around, that crank arm pulls the arm back and forward. An important feature here is the slurry or the abrasive mix, which is getting put in there. So you can get an idea of the blades there going back and forward because it, even though it's slower than a circular saw or a wire rope saw, significantly slower, because you have so many blades running at once and if you're just using iron blades, it's very, very cheap to do. So we, we, if you've got a kitchen, granite bench top, coffee table, marble, doesn't matter, probably cut by a gang saw because I think they're running like 80 blades here at once. So even though it might be 20 times slower than a diamond circular saw or a wire rope saw, well, I'm cutting 80 of them at once. So it's actually quicker to cut multiples at one time. Now this, you know, getting important feet. Now here they are doing it with a machine and with a pump. They're pumping the slurry, the water, which is a defined abrasive diamond dust, uh, corundum or silicon carbide, whatever the abrasive is, gets poured into the machine. It, f it falls down to the bottom, it gets collected, filtered out and gets re reinserted into the machine over and over. This is the modern way to do it. I'm sure they were doing it in ancient times because when I was doing my hand cutting experiments, hand drilling experiments, I was doing the same thing. I was keeping the mud because there's another important feature as that mud gets ground down into a fine paste. It's also a valuable resource because now it's a polishing powder. You can use it to not just cut, but polishing is cutting, but it's just doing very fine, invisible size scratches to get a lovely mirror finish. So that's a gang saw. So you know, we cut all these little slabs. Uh, because it vibrates less, this is also better to do it with a gang saw because if you use a circular saw or a diamond rope saw to cut thin slabs, the vibration's probably going to break them. All right, so that's a modern gang saw. That's an ancient gang saw. That's you know, and so whether it, we go, the, the motion back and forth is quite slow. It's not brrr, thousand reps. Could be done by hand. Could be done by a water wheel. You don't want to go too fast with some of these things. A uh, Schwerin grinding mill in Germany, powered by a water wheel. This was not for grinding grain, it was a manufacturing stone in this place. Uh, this is in America, but just to, just to show you the same principle, that a, a sawing lumber with a powered saw. This is exactly the same as that ancient Roman tech. Wood, rope, you now we've got steel here and there, but again you could use bronze or copper. And it's circular motion from the water wheel through a crank it's turned and powers the saw up and down so whether you're cutting stone or you're cutting wood it's exactly the same thing very simple machines very primitive technology and uh, other sawmills did it by hand I did a recent place of old pictures of uh, loggers working cutting those giant trees down with axes and hand-powered saws so uh, also at that grinding mill outside, they've also got a, well this would be a, a drag saw because I think it's only got one blade running at one time. But again, it's the same principle. You've got a wheel, crank handle, uh, whether this one was powered by steam or whether it was also powered by a water wheel, I don't know. But uh, on the inside, we do see this crank arm. This was a water wheel powered and they were producing product, you know, all sorts of stone products. Uh, important feature there, just like that gang saw where they collect the slurry, you can see here, so it's not just about Germans being all neat, it's also about collecting that mud, that slurry, because you've still got the abrasives in there, you can recycle it back in, and as it gets finer and turns into a really paste, again, it has a value as for high grade polishing, not just polishing stone, but polishing glass, polishing anything, essentially. All right, back to this machine. Uh, so here's a, um, Again, this is a drag saw, but exactly like the powered gang saw, but we just have one blade in some places. I've seen some quarries that are still using a single blade, and they, it might take a day or two or even three to cut through the stone. These are not like done in minutes. 
people still take days to cut through stone. But it's the direction of a blade going back and forth and it's parallel with the block. We'll come back and just We'll come back to this because this is an important feature in regards to the shape of the stone and the evidence of lost ancient high technology can't be done, can't be reproduced, etc. Uh, so again, whether it's powered by a water wheel, powered by an electric motor, or just powered by hand, it's just the way it was done. Here's an old relief from the Marvel Studio. Um, get it, it's, you can see the nubs where the, where the saw got broken off, but. Some Romans were using water wheels, other people still doing it by hand labour. And that goes, that's the case in, even after the Industrial Revolution. Some had moved to steam, some were still using water, but some people were still doing manual labour. So it's the same fella, but again, uh, it's not feasible. Well, come on. Um, here they are cutting a large block, so again to the I did this experiment, well yours is only small, it just doesn't weigh, well here's people doing it on, on a giant heavy block. Um, there's some more examples, just to highlight, again, same thing, just to zoom in on that fella. Uh, now their drag saws going backwards and forth, and there's another type which is a swing saw. So we still have that same wooden frame with a saw blade, but it's just hanging from a rope and it's swinging back and forth. Yeah, this is an important feature, but uh, here are some you know, deep down in, you know, like the Serapeum. Oh, but it's, you know, the, the tunnels are 200 metres in, you would choke, there's no oxygen down there. How do you think coal miners, you know, operate? So this is another thing that these lost ancient, they're always like presenting this information that's sciencey and seems legit, but you just like, well, this is, it is, but it, it's ridiculous in the end because you go, well, yeah, how do people work in deep coal mines, uh, you know, prior to modern ventilation systems? Again, old quarry blokes, I like these old saws that they were using. You know, um, just in the day, people, you know, it wasn't so long ago that people had to work for a living. So back to the direction of a blade. So whether it's these old fashioned, just iron blades, or whether it's the modern ones with the diamond teeth, it's going backwards and forth, parallel with the top of the block so you think it would cut a straight line but it's a bit more complex than that. So again these are uh, old gang saws, um, I'm not sure if they're, they're steam powered or electric powered but uh, important. Okay, Jarish saw, this is another one, Jarish in Jordan and this is this granite column and there's a couple others there as well. This is the reconstruction of oh, there again, wa uh, the water fed the wheel, turned the machine and it's got this you can't see it clearly, but just like the Heriopolis saw, it's a backwards and forwards motion. It's not a swinging motion, it's backwards and forwards. Uh, there you go, of course, illustrations just to give you your idea. So the saw goes back and forth and they were recycling stone, as was the thing. Uh, now here we see, so again, old fashioned, but sort of modern gang saw, but we see this block and it's gang saw cuts, one, two, three, four blades and a gap in the middle, one, two, three, four blades. And you'll even notice that these chisel marks, someone's already chiseled the guides for the next four blades to come in there. Ancient gang saws, water powered, better than hand powered. Electric powered, well, depends on your interpretation, but exactly the same thing. So again, old fashioned gang saws, now notice the pits underneath, so they're just like that modern version where they're using pumps and well they collected the slurry because it was valuable. Alright so what I want to do is now show the difference between convey, convex and concave surfaces. This is one of the impossible we cannot be explained. Alright so let's look at this saw again. Notice how there's a different pattern in the, the way the blades have been worn. Even modern gang saws that are still using just the steel um, every third block that they're cutting in granite, depending on the thickness of the block, they need to replace it. Steel wears out as well. Notice how that piece is missing. So what they've done is they've flipped the blade over so that the bottom edge, which is the cutting edge, is the straight part because this top part had been used and worn out and was starting to create a curved blade. All right, keep that in mind, curved blade. This one you can see the same things happening as well. The blade's been worn out and curved. That's where you got these nice new straight ones which haven't been worn down yet. Here's the old fella uh, using a 
drag saw, and again you can see that at the end the blade's thick and it tapers down because it's been worn down over time. Um, steel wears out, copper wears out, and copper wears out surprisingly very slowly compared to granite cutting. Very, very slowly. Okay, go back to this Ephesus saw and this picture because this is not a linear, well it is, but it's really an arc. So it's not being dragged backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. It's swinging at a very shallow angle, shallow arc. And there we can see those, um, so different type of motion. So a bit like a swing saw, well it is a swing saw. The direction of a blade is not backwards and forwards because it's swinging on the rope. It's actually creating a gentle curve. So the red is the actual path of the blade. If it was the blue line would be it moving backwards and forwards. This affects the cut. I showed that clip of this earlier. They didn't have straight blades on there. They had a curve to their blades. Because if it was straight and it was swinging, well, only part of the blade would ever be in contact at one time and the initial part of the cut would be very clumsy because the rope would not be under tension. So a, a curved blade instead of a straight one works beautifully, works smoothly, and it creates a concaved cut. Curved, it, it, it creates a circuit, a giant circular fork mark is what it creates, all right? This is, um, if the lost ancient high technology has actually had any interest in truth, reality research, they would, uh, cover this because well they, they know it exists now so it's not just they didn't know and okay my bad uh, it's they don't want this to be known here's another version of it uh, might trying to replicate Mycenaean that what they, they had these cuts with these curves in there as well pendulum saw would achieve the same thing so swing saw has multiple ropes pendulum saw has like one swing arm and an axle, axle. Uh, back and forth just the nature of the swing is going to create a curved cut you don't use the straight, straight blades wouldn't work too well because they're not in contact, so they used the curved blades. You can see that curved blade created that cut. Uh, also, what they noted was, for instance, this stone has a curved cut, that's from that location. But you notice how this part has been knocked down. So, all right, so if you have a side-mounted blade, or, or central, but side would be... You'd only get to a certain depth before the pendulum arm would hit the stone and you can't cut anymore. Well, then you can chisel it off and break off that piece of stone. I'll show you another example. So even with a very short blade, it's um, very possible, very simple actually, to cut a very deep cut. We'll come back to that towards the end. All right, so but we have concaved cuts. In, these are not circular saw cuts. These are concave cuts. And all right, so here's another, like with a, whether it's a pendulum or a swing saw, um, I've just got to put, you know, so you had to have a curved blade and uh, I'll fix up the resolution anyway. So you could have it fixed at a single point in the middle or you could have it fixed at two points at the end that's going to change the type of arc. I'm just putting a pen in there just to follow and you can see uh, and you know exactly what type of curve, concave, you're going to get in the saw. And so again, this is one of the, the mainstays of lost ancient high technology. Can't be done, unexplained. You know, yes, it can be done or it's unexplained. No, it isn't unexplained. They've just got no interest in looking at the truth. Uh, no interest in even really simple experimentation. And more importantly, they're uh, covering up actual experiment experiments that have been done. They just keep recycling the Dennis Stocks experiment and the Sphinx nose experiment as if it's there. So, yeah, uh, curved blades, it's, if you're swinging pendulum saw, swing saw, it's just going to create one, not a problem. Uh, an example of uh, cutting with a copper saw into gra granite, I created a curved blade, and more importantly, I did it by beginning with a straight blade. So, by the end of the cut, my saw had got worn down into a curve, and that created that curved cut and notice the striations as well. Uh, here's the video, the links in there, I go into the descriptions, whatever, I bring my receipts. The way I did it was get a flattened copper pipe. Copper pipe, I flattened it out and made a straight blade. Then I just pulled the blade backwards and forwards and the blade, this is again an important feature, the blade 
is shorter than the cut that's being made. So as I'm moving it backwards and forwards, the, the edge, the leading edge, the corners of the blade were under more pressure. So they got ground down further and slowly the straight edge become a curved blade. And you can see that, so flattened copper pipe, this still hasn't worn out, but the ends, of course, now have worn out. And you can see that where the copper splits. And the cutting motion was I, brought, I took the saw to the very edge of the stone and then brought it back. So shorter blade, taking it right just to the edge and bringing it back. Because of that, the middle part of the blade was in constant contact with the middle part. So the middle part of the stone actually, the cut, the copper and sand was constantly being pushed against there as the edges had less time under, under the blade. And so the middle got ground out more contact, more time with the blade. It got ground out faster than what the edges did. You create a concave uh, saw cut. This is nothing special. Now, swing saws. Because of well, because they're swinging, it doesn't really. Even if you try and use a curved blade, it's a bad idea, unless it's uh, curved outwards. But just the direction of the movement, as it's swinging, only part of it is going to be in contact and so that creates that convex curve so as it goes backwards and forwards and the blade is again important feature this blade is longer than the stone being cut because it's held together by a frame and just by the next so as it goes up or forward it's going to create that part of the curve and as you pull it back it's going to create that part of the curve so this is how to create convex surfaces now back to the Heriopolis saw, even though the blade is being pushed backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, you think in a straight motion it's going to create a straight cut. Well, those two earlier factors come together because the blade is longer. All right, so even if the blade starts out straight against a, cutting a flat piece of stone, as I cut, because the abrasive is affecting the steel or the copper, the middle of the blade is in constant contact with the stone, but the edges of the blade are not. And so the, the middle middle is under constant contact and each of these edges, that's why it tapers off, is under less contact. And so the blade gets worn out. And so you have, well, would you call it a concave blade? But this creates a convex surface. So in these straight blades going backwards and forwards a drag saw, uh, if the blades aren't maintained, turned over, flipped over, uh, it's going to create a convex surface. So this is again, so going back to this image, okay, that's now it should be flipped horrible, but uh, again you can see the shape of the blade, it got worn out. That's the leading edge which is now cutting the straight side because they flipped it over. They used the old side of the blade was curved creating convex cuts, not as efficient, so you just flip them over. Um, now with these diamond segment type of blades, the distance between the teeth uh, is not uniform. Okay. You can pause and read, but the diamond segments are distributed along the blade length with non-uniform spacing in locations along the length having a propensity for higher wear rates, a greater number of segments per unit length for mounted. So again, to overcome, so even with these diamond teeth, you, know, you, you want to keep the cut as straight, parallel to the block as you can, and so they distribute the teeth distances. A convex cut, not only explained, it's uh, in some cases unavoidable unless you do regular maintenance. So back to, this is a cut now. Uh, this is my copper blade, again just as a point out. The sand becomes embedded in the blade, so essentially that pure copper blade has now become copper sandpaper or copper paper because the, the abrasive gets embedded in there. But notice the shape of it because the saw blade is the one with the short blade. I created a concave cut in the stone. The one with the longer blade, I'm going to create a concave cut because, well, you can even see the shape of a blade. It gets worn in the middle and that gets reflected onto the stone itself. Again, this was a flattened copper pipe, and you can see how it's worn out, and the split of that copper pipe is pointing out. So this is not a mystery. 
in its own, again, convex blade. If I keep using that blade, it's going to create more of a convex cut. Originally, at the very beginning of a cut, it's flat. As the blade gets worn down, convex. This is no mystery. Okay, so there's the details and the facts and you know, the actual reality of the situation of whether it's ancient stone cutting by hand, ancient stone cutting with a water wheel or, ain't, or modern stone cutting uh, with power machines. Exactly the same principle. Lost ancient high technologists, they just don't know what the hell they're talking about in regards to these things. Okay, now comes for the hardcore debunken part of the issue. So, evidence for ancient high technology part one machining by Uncharted X, Brian Foster, that whole crew, they're all Yusuf one they're all repeating this. So, quote, the very tiny width of a blade is indicated by the lip at the edge of his cut makes it nothing short of impossible, nothing short of impossible, not almost impossible, but nothing short of impossible. That such a saw could have been made by a soft material like copper or bronze or still managed to cut through basalt. Uh, where did he come up with this? This is an absurdity. It's just made up probably uh, a Christopher Dunnism. All right, so there we see another picture and angle of it. Uh, well, I, I had absolutely no problem. I'll bring my receipts. I've got the uncut footage. I've got the breakdown of the footage. Absolutely, it can be done. Whoever said this just made it up they lied they didn't test it that they'd have no understanding of just basic materials especially nasa scientist christopher dunn engineer so um yeah uh linking it like i even put the whole raw uncut footage in there absolutely it can be done and just to point out this is a for abu Sir, but we also have these very thin cutting edge in these copper uh, in these granite cores. So even though this video goes back a couple years, just like Brian Foster, Uncharted X knows that this is untrue. Uncharted X asked for experiments and still asked for experiments very recently when he knows they've been done. We'll come to this in a moment. So this is not um, an old claim, this is a new claim. So again, as he points out, only a few millimetres of material, only a few millimetres. Well, I've, I've got one millimetre. If I had a thinner piece of copper, I could have even done less than that. So this is just wrong, utterly wrong. And, and the statement to begin with was wrong. There was no evidence, no knowledge, no experience based on that. It is just a, a lie to sell the lost ancient high technology in that narrative. Set up things as impossible. Therefore, now we can consider advanced precision power machines. All right. So who told them these things? Why did they never test them? It takes less time to test these things than what it does to go on the podcast and sell this. And it costs nothing to do. So this is a re uh, recent podcast evidence for super advanced technology, three and a half hours. Uh, yeah, he could have done multiple experiments in this time to learn the things which he is asking other people to do and he is repeat and they have been done he repeats them he knows these are a lie just like the ridiculous symmetry of okay let's zoom in on that um super symmetry well why is this ear less than that ear i did a whole video on this uh the yeah uh i'll put the link in it because this idea of statue symmetry is is just ru absolute rubbish Granite boxes in Egyptian tunnels are still unexplained. What's unexplained about them? The only thing unexplained is why he won't admit information that exists out there. He makes claims. He's never read the accounts. He's never acknowledged experiments that has been done. He says precision, precision when they're not. So again, experiments and analysis he's asked for, but he covers up. This guy is just a liar. It's not that he was wrong in the past and, and I'm getting some old claim and, and holding him to that. He knows these things, he's asked for these things, and he still says them now. It is a lie, it is a fraud, it is a sham, it's for money. So one of the things he says in that is like he's still saying that the core seven is a is a spiral, you know, and research and, and, and must be done. Uh, again, going back over a year, but a year ago by YouTube time, they went to the Petri Museum, they got high-res photos, mapped it all out. It is not a spiral. He knows that and he's still saying that. Okay, so back to this quote. The circ the, now he's asserting that the circular saw marks, it must be, uh, that have been quite clearly, that have made this to use a cut to cut large blocks of stone, don't match any technique known from the ancient world. 
absolute rubbish, nonsense. And again, he, he knew that then, and he certainly knows that now, but he won't retract from these claims because he still goes on about the impossible to replicate striations. Uh, here's the cut. Now, again, you can see the strike. This is just inevitable outcome of loose abrasive. Uh, again, the, the curved cuts, and so an important feature to know is that the type of abrasive you use, the grit size that you use, the amount of water that you use is going to affect and create different types of striations. Uh, this is from modern saw cutting. Uh, again, the same, so ancient techniques absolutely explain this. Modern techniques explain this. He just doesn't know, well, he does know, and he's covering up. It's, it's based on lies. Here's some... Uh, old pictures of a core drilling samples. Again, we have these striations inside and outside. Sometimes they're uh, lower, sometimes they're higher. Again, it will depend on the, the method that you're using, the, how much you apply, how often you clean it out. All these little variables come together and only through multiple experiments can I say with 100% certainty that all these things are act actually possible and very heavily censored by Ben from Uncharted X and from Brian Foster and just that whole group so we can get okay so here's uh, just a little piece of video again we get one style of striation quite deep another one bit deeper there a little bit different but uh, this is all done with the same tool and with the same uh, basic set of abrasives and now we'll see this one in a moment and that one's much more polished very light striations I can by having done multiple experiments in multiple types of stones using different abrasive mixes, all with a copper, the same copper tool, I was able to create these different patterns in striations. This is not a mystery. Ben Van Kerwick is a liar. He's not wrong. He, you know, if he's refused to correct these things and he's still stating them again. So this is just a lie and just wrong. So now circular saw marks will curved saw marks if you insist it's a circular saw then you're going to think that is well but again the fact is uh the impossible that, that he claims therefore circular saw marks is not impossible done by experiments and he covers these things up now okay one question would be uh i showed multiple methods one of the ones i showed earlier in the video was by having a blade that is shorter than the block and then the question will be well how do you cut a long block because you can do it to a certain depth but then the handle would get in the way okay uh, here's a video there on that and so well if I was to use a saw like that whether it was centrally mounted or two blades on the side I would get to a certain depth and then the handle would get in the way and I wouldn't be able to go down any deeper this is very easy to solve you'd use a side mounted blade so once I get to a certain length as you can see by those pictures there well at that point now the saw is getting in the way but with a side mounted blade it wouldn't because it's very easy on the edge as we've seen with other videos to uh, break and fracture granite so just with a tap you can see how that fin edge would be broken with a if it was a bit wider it would give it a bit more of a bang until eventually you, you knock that piece off this is also a way to do nice right angles and stuff um, and well now the stone isn't in the way and with a side with a short half inch side mounted blade I've added that block of wood just to simulate that if the stone block was deeper uh, with a half inch side mounted blade I can get now cut even further down so there is no issue uh, in regards to this very simple problem solving capability I assume that our ancestors with basic tools were able to overcome a lot of problems and clearly they were the only people who don't have problem solving ability is a uh, lost ancient high technologists it's cringe it's uh, unbelievable now quote when we see these marks there is no there is really no mainstream explanation of how they were made in antiquity uh, rubbish absolute crap again I did the breakdown I even put the raw footage up it's it's a saw whether it's copper whether it's steel you could do it with wood or with plastic because it's not the copper it's not the steel it's not the wood it's not the plastic that does the cutting they're just all the sand in sandpaper they're just there to push the abrasive in there now another one of the things well these profile how do you explain these profile cuts i was able to replicate all of them uh very very easy it's going to be the thickness of the blade uh whether you run a single blade if you have two fin blades running together i'd cover all this in the breakdown not a problem very easy 
problem solving abilities and, and the lost ancient high technologists who have never done a legitimate experiment. Christopher Dunn's experiments are faked, they're a fraud. All right, now it's cutting, so there is no mainstream explanation. Rubbish, nonsense. This is just a lie again. Um, because there's a lie that he's interested in re researching these things. So whether it's a powered gang saw, whether it's powered by a water wheel or by electric motor or by or by labour, it's exactly the same. So, I mean, is there no mainstream explanation how this guy was able to cut a stone? And again, I've done it with copper, so steel versus you know copper. It, it's a ridiculous argument, and those who hang on to it are doing it because they're doing it to protect the cult. This is a religion. This stuff. So it's a cut. There's nothing fancy or unexplained and no mainstream explanation at all. Lost ancient high technologists have no explanation for their utter ignorance and lack of research, lack of experimentation in this thing that they care about. Well, that can be explained because it's the cash. They've, they've set their identity up to it and they just can't move backwards. They can't do any work. They can't take a backward step because the house of card collapses. It's just a cut. Copper, iron, loose abrasive, the striations match. Test it for yourself, lost ancient high technologists, all right. So again, um, some of these machines left consistent, measurable light. Well, it's just a, it's a cut and people did it by hand. You know, you don't need, you know, so what is this? These tools must have been truly monstrous and they must also have been powered by some mechanism. Yes, the mechanism was a water wheel, or a hand power, or have have horses or, or cattle or whatever walking around in a circle pulling a wood. Again, like they do this tricky lie. We'll go, oh, I never actually said that. No, these are the things that they say and they still say. Them. A power tool just removes the labor. That's all, it doesn't change, it doesn't make it magical. Or the, you know, So whether you did this was powered by a, uh, you know, an actuator, whatever you call it, um, or in a machine or hydraulics or electricity or a combustion engine or it's all the same it's just ridiculous these claims that they make so no no absolutely not it's all everything this guy says is wrong you know again now just like with core seven oh the feed rate it must have been cutting through at such a rapid speed because these lines he's suggesting that each line is one movement back and forth of the saw. The only thing that this indicates is a complete ignorance of the topic that he's pretending to know something about. Uh, but I have to, he does know, he covers the information up, asks for experiments, doesn't recognize them, asks for research, doesn't carry it on. This is just a lost ancient high technology trait. They don't care about the truth, they pretend to. All right, so this is a nonsense as well. We've re I've replicated it multiple times. They should have replicated it if they actually cared. Um, anyone who's got in any doubt, very cheap. You can get the stone offcuts from any like uh, stone, you know, your, your local stone supplier or granite prepent. They'll have blocks that they'll just throw into the rubbish. You can buy a box of sandpaper or a grinding disc for the corundum. You can just get some sandstone, crush it up. You can get some granite and you just crush it up to make an abrasive very quickly and very cheaply you can absolutely test this no doubt about it no again um, okay primitive hand tools made from copper indeed well you know this guy this, he's, this guy's a liar <laughs> all right um now he goes on now they were polished to an astonishing level of flatness which removed the grooves and striations again i've done multiple experiments with this this is the easiest one to do and very quickly so uh, half an hour I can remove the striations to get a beautifully flat surface and a little bit more than that I got it down to single microns of flatness which again lost Ban and uh, what was his name Poo yeah, Yard whatever his name is the, the BAM guy uh, this is impossible by hand tools utter rubbish they've never tried uh, or they have and they're, la they're lazy or they're lying but the fact is they're lying because even when it's presented to them they don't cover it uh, now here's a, I grabbed this screenshot a while ago, so this if you're in any doubt, it is actually Ben's policy not to allow links to the very things that he claims to be interested in. So he goes, to the experimentalist, I dare you to do this. Well we do, and then uh, you know, it's against the channel policy. 
been, it's been very thoroughly and eloquently stated. It serves no point or purpose. We don't, please don't post cross-channel links. It goes against the policy of his channel. So someone asked him to you know, talk about the scientists against Smith's video, and he doesn't cover them. This is lost ancient high technology. Their approach to information that they, they demand the information and then they censor it. They are liars and they are censors and they are frauds and they are scoundrels and this is not about uh, arguing just who's right or wrong. This is a character issue and they have no character. They are weak, untruthful, spoilt entitled children. All right, now, level of flatness, all right, now, just as a reminder, using circular saws like this isn't the typical way civilizations quarry stone. Uh, right up, right until we get into the modern mechanized age. Yeah, true, true. That's that's absolutely true. Um, but th this is a modern development. So until, but until barely a hundred years ago, the technique used in the field was far different and far more primitive. Well, why doesn't he show them? Show that we saw it. I've, I showed you. That's how it used to be done. The circular saw marks that have been quite clearly um, used to cut large blocks of stone mat don't match any technique. Again, utter utter crap, nonsense, lies. They certainly seem to indicate some form of mechanized capacity, much like our own. No, they don't. Not certainly, and not at all. They just indicate a saw cut. And just as a reminder, zero evidence has been found of these machines. Uh, and we have all of the evidence that points to this being, being again, um, where, where is one, one piece of evidence? We don't need an intact ancient machine. We just need the indicators of machine building, which would, because he, a machine doesn't pop out, out of here. You have to build the tools that make the tools that make the machine. Uh, the mining residue, all of these other features, all the bits and pieces that go into it would be left over. I think scientists against Smith made the point they spoke of a tractor. We don't we wouldn't need to find an ancient intact tractor to think that the ancients had them. We just need to find a few of the pieces of the infrastructure that go into building such things. Nothing has been found. There is zero evidence for lost ancient high technology power tools. Uh, again, this common what like the only one that they show, and they keep showing it, granite cutting and drilling. They this they cut, they show this one because they love it because then they can sort of poo poo on it, but they don't tell you the truth. They don't go into the book by Dennis Stocks. But um, so when we see these marks, quote, when we see these marks, there really is no mainstream explanation for how they were made in antiquity. Absolute nonsense. Other than with the idea of two men, uh, two man copper or bronze saw being pushed back and forth by a couple of guys using sand or some other abrasive material to slowly, very slowly, grind through the stone. Well, what about two men with steel blades? And is, like, steel magical? It's, again, like, this thing with cheat, like, oh, they didn't have steel chisels. Precision, like, steel doesn't transfer precision through to the person. But this is, a, they build up all of these little ideas and, and, and factoid, fake factoids, put them together. They, it's a common comment trick. You create doubt, and then you can insert anything. Uh, now, although this technique will eventually wear away the stone, it is more of a grinding motion than a cutting mechanism. And there's several problems with this. Well, there actually is several problems with what you've just said. It's more of a grinding motion than a cutting mechanism. Uh, wire rope saws, still used to cut stone. They cut very, very fast. They have all these little diamond teeth attached to them, diamond abrasive. It's, but it's sand rope is how they are doing it now. Before they, you know, this was the common way, they would just use a wire rope and uh, a standard free abrasive mix as well. Cutting stone through grinding, okay, that is still the way that it's done. Whether it's a steel disc with diamond or silicon carbide or whether it's a masonry disc which is just glued together abrasive and the mesh, cut you cut stone through grinding. Same process as sandpaper. Now, uh, as we saw, drag saw. So whether it's whether you're drilling in a circle or you're cutting, it's grinding is the way that it's still done. And the gr and the marks by this grinding leave the same marks that he says cannot be explained by the mainstream. So uh, just wrong. Like and again knows it. He's lying about this, and it doesn't leave 
anything like the marks we saw on Abu Sir, it's a grinding process, not a cutting process like we see on this block. What does cutting mean? I, um, <coughs> like, cutting is a vague term. Uh, you can cut something through a lot of different ways. One of the ways you can cut is grinding. How do I cut stone? Grinding. Now there are newer <coughs> technologies emerging, but still to this day, most of it, almost all of it is done by grinding and this was how it was done historically. Ben doesn't know, or he is lying, of course, he's lying. Uh, there's obvious problems, it would take far too long to grind away through all these blocks in this way. Well, how do we, we have a few blocks with these cutting marks, uh, but, okay, it would take too long. Lost ancient high technologists simply do not have a grasp of human history. It would take too long to cut a giant tree with a handsaw. <laughs> so whether it's recent or ancient, they don't understand how the world works. That's the charitable explanation. But the thing is, again, they do, and that's why they need to block, censor, delete, hide information and deny its existence, because their con, their lie, and their profits that they get from that would fall apart. Uh, then it's way too large to have been done by hand with primitive tools like copper saws. Again, these are the uh, comments I get often. Well, no, the copper would bland, bend and blubber and copper's soft. Um, copper supplies, whether it's bars, sheets, um, standard length, three to four, six, uh, three point six. This is a local distributor. I wanted to get some copper, but I just they don't sell it in small pieces from them. I have to get it otherwise, but. Copper bars come in long sheets, Any like Christopher Dunn should know this, so even thin metal will bend and be flexy but it's still strong. Copper is, is, not, is it's not like wet tissue paper that just folds over. This is an absolute nonsense. So Christopher Dunn was probably the origin of this, like with most of Ben's work, and Ben refuses to correct it. They're, they're con men. Now we come to the most befuddling evidence for some advanced technology. So all these other saw marks, blades, curve marks, all utterly explainable within the known ancient technologies which were used right up until very recently. And ancient technology is still used today. We've just mechanised it and brought in steel instead of wood. All right. So this is from Abu Rawash. Notorious Sabah granite. granite comes from the Old Kingdom uh, site. Well, firstly, let's assume that it is they just attach everything to that must be from the old kingdom the middle and late kingdom they never did anything not not a thing but anyway um so you see the circular grooves circular saw mark grooves and the basalt uh these grooves just like in the basalt blocks at abu si we have those striations again uh, look no not a mystery at all again ben knows it ben's a liar uh, then we have this piece here, and so we have, okay, that's just a close-up view from Christopher Dunn, the, the fraudster. All right, now, how to explain this cut? Now, uh, it's not something that could have been done with, with hand tools, and frankly, it bends my mind trying to imagine this. Well, of course it bends your mind, because your mind is, is uh, tissue paper, Ben. You don't understand any of these things you pretend to but and you don't and you you lie about them and right so there's another his two views of the block now what's going on with this particular block firstly we see a curved cut at the end we've already seen how to do that this is not a mystery the striations are not a mystery but the intriguing part about this stone is that it's also curved along this axis so we have a curved cut where the break is again and we have this curved cut here all right. This is how to achieve this is no mystery at all. This curve cut, we've multiple ways to do it. Uh, but now, how to do this curve at the bottom? Well, I used a straight blade with a straight guide. Uh, steel and copper are flexible. If I was to bend it a little bit and create a curved guide, I could do that cut and I would still get the curved part at the bottom if I was to do it again, those methods that I showed before. So, this is. Um, this is absolutely possible, uh, simple problem solving, which they lack. All right, um, evidence for circular saws. So we have that curved blade, but also we have that step, that little indent. Okay, now, firstly, that one is straight and this is curved. All right, so if anything, this part here is curved in the opposite direction. Okay, so curved cut. 
curved cut. All right, done. All right, here we go. Now, so we see that little step, that little lip, the little shelf that's been cut there, and zoom in. But uh, notice there's, there's actually two other ones. All right, so we actually have one here, trace of one there, and one here. So, okay, these are big issues for Christopher Dunn and friends to solve because they don't they don't match their circular. So these can be replicated with the method I've described. I'll show you exactly how, um, but they can't be even explained, let alone replicated by the Christopher Dunn and friends. All right, so let's look at that stone now. And this is a very impressive picture because it shows it in truth. And this is something when you see lost ancient high technologists, they don't, they go out of their way not to show you things. Like all of a sudden the resolution gets low when they're filming inside the Serapeum and this type of stuff. All right, so we can see that there's all sorts of undulations there. I've just highlighted them. We go back and forth, you can see. So these would match the saw blade undulating as it goes down the method I showed it it doesn't uh, a circular saw no absolutely not we can rule that out. it's just silly to suggest it all right so here's uh, another view from uh, serpent brothers <laughs> uh, there we can see the stone from the side and get an idea of the arc of that stone it's a very gentle arc so they're suggesting it was a giant circular saw well, all right, uh, and they're saying 10 meters, 30, 35 feet. Uh, to get that to match, this would be absolutely like, uh, I'd have to get it uh, a little bit, yeah, um, not the best map, but you can see how colossal a circular stone would have, a circular saw would have to be to cut that. It's um, bordering on farcical to suggest this idea, so it was like a, the circular saw is going around and it's cutting in that direction. Sorry, the marks and the undulation just don't match. Uh, master engineer, manufacturing expert Christopher Dunn, how could he even propose this idea when he looks at and seeing these? And he's all over it with his science, he's measuring and all that stuff. No, absolutely not. You can rule that, that explanation out. So how is one way it can happen? Well, let's go back to the Ephesus saw. And so I zoom, zoom in down on this area and you can see that these, these lips have been cut. Here's another view of those. And there's also a, a trench. So not just a lip, it's also embedded in and come out. Now we go to the mysterious you know, power saw sarcophagus and we see a similar feature where it's running straight. I did a video of this on going through all these, what's going on in this block, uh, unfinished sarcophagus same thing is happening just you know if you were to rotate that because that's saw is going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards in this direction or more that's the one all right and the saw is going in this particular picture up or down because the block's now on its side but that's what we get uh, very easy to explain it's the twist in the blade as the twist blade gets twisted on one side and that mark is not on this side, but it is here on the bottom. The operator was twisting the saw, it got caught in, and then the issue was solved now. Uh, you got a hand, you know, and from this alone you can now tell how it's basically being operated and almost certainly had a long handle on there. And well, how can we look at that? Well, here's a clip of uh, some people using a cross cut saw, like a big, again, exactly the same tool, but then they're cutting wood tree trunk now notice okay the fella on this side has got his saw straight and well she's you know, not very experienced you know, whatever uh, no she hasn't got so for one thing she's bending the saw okay that's how those cuts it that's how they happen there's another reason we can see uh, just by observing you know, having some experience and observing things well notice the saw as well so firstly it's She's bending it, which is going to put pressure in the middle of the saw and create a different shape on the inside. But you can also see she's also twisting the saw. You can see it gets very thin and narrow, and then as it comes up, 
I'll put the link in the description. You can go through to your heart's content because it's just getting the high res. But yeah, and so she's twisting the saw blade and not and and bending it. So these type of marks is how, especially when they're uneven, is how it's happening. But also, so totally explainable, no mystery um, at all. It actually fits, whether it's the striations, just have a curved blade and curved guide to begin the cut, and then you can still end up with a curved edge on the other side. Do an experiment, please, Lost Ancient High Technologists. We've provided all of the basic info, and there you go. That will help yourself. Now let's bring up this paper by Robert Moores. Again, it's the one that they love. Ben loves to highlight this paper and the Penn State paper, but again, covers up all the other information. Um, interesting, but again, there's a lot of... You know, he criticised it, well, I'm going to criticise it too. <laughs> so he's talking about the cuts, and so we have those curved, but we also have the straight blade cuts and the striations at Abu Sir. Uh, then modern cuts just do exactly the same if you're using, especially if you're using uh, loose abrasive. Problem is that how, the way he's describing it now. Firstly, he's like has a 400, like a giant saw blade. Uh, wh wh why? I don't know. Um, you know. He could use a thinner one and weigh it down, but that's not necessary either. Um, but also the way he's describing it. Well, it's, he even says it's a pendulum. Well, a pendulum wouldn't cut a straight line like this. It just it would create an arc. So again, those circular saw marks would be created by this type of tool and if Ben loves to criticise this but maybe you should have looked a little bit further because this is on showed earlier it's a swing saw and it's not going to create a straight cut it's going to create a curved cut just like this arc here and he also yeah it's okay um, so this impossible to do cut absolutely is possible uh, another way to think about it like this is from the, I'll link this paper next was talking about the well especially when you have a swing saw such as this you also you know without a guide it's going to go you can cut at an angle and go off and you can also uh, rotate around that axis as well which creates these type of faults as we saw in the remaining block at the Ephesus uh, saw all those little dings inside the Abiru wash block and instead of a swing saw they suggest that it was a like a long cross cut saw with handles. The handle was being bent and it was being twisted. That's how you make those marks. So, you know, it, you know good on you know, uh, Roger Robert Moores for this, but there's a lot of problems with that because I would just be looking at how people actually did it and they didn't use a giant super heavy blade. They just used a little one. So he also gives a... Uh, 42 seconds per minute um, 42 millimeters sorry cut for a minute to be fair he's not be specifying generally with stones and says that different uh, different hardness material being cut so different stones so that might be true in chalk or something like that not it's not going to be true in granite um, and I think despite like he doesn't specify that this is the rate to cut through granite he's just using in general terms but anyway it would to the casual reader would be suggesting that way well not 42 millimeters a minute um, 50 millimeters an hour is a very good cutting rate for a modern gang saw or which is a drag saw as he is here so the fancy new ones with the diamond teeth and all of that type of stuff are still running abrasive pumping it in from the top um, just going back and forth ka -chunk, ka -chunk. Well, 50 mil an hour and for completely feasible, still to this day. So again, when they say it will take too long. Um, these modern ones are going to, to 50 mil. When you see the old older ones that didn't have the diamond teeth and uh, weren't running these pumps to keep the, the abrasive at just the right consistency with just the right amount of water and just the right of continual amount of pressure on there, well, other references have them down to 20 mil an hour or 25 mil an hour. Uh, the experiments I did is almost half of that. So, and I could have improved them as well. So this thing that it takes too long or it's infeasible, nonsense. It's just, that's just uh, uh, lazy modern people who just don't know about what, what their grandfathers did. And 
and are just like work shy, never handled a tool in their life and talk like they do. So here's some data on gang saws, uh, drag saws, so they're talking about the cost. So one of the things that more modern ones use is steel shot combined with the abrasive um, as well. And here he's just talking about the price. Like, so one of the things is the pricing. So he mentions the cost of iron and uh, well, anyway, can look through and read it more because also the cutting speed is quite different between the two system. Gang saw cuts at a speed of five centimeters per hour and that's on the high end of the newer stuff. A diamond wire saw about a hundred cent one meter an hour but it's much more expensive to run that system so if you want to cut a lot of planks all at once even though a gang saw is much slower it's able to do a lot at once which means it's actually far it's actually cutting more stone over a period of time than what the much faster tools like a circular saw is operating big giant circular saws are very expensive because once that diamond bits wear out you have to go get, put them back on they cut a lot more power goes into it and stuff so it's an economics thing as well totally feasible so old-fashioned gang saw old-fashioned gang saw lost ancient high technology goggles now with new censorship well actually it's they've been running censorship all along there is zero mystery um, to these things that they're claiming Ben Brian Foster know that it is and they continue to lie deliberately lie to protect the old so it used to be a mistake you could admit them or they didn't know they didn't care to do any research but that they still repeat these things now um, is and this is their policy is to censor and then complain that people aren't being civil to them when they lie and then they censor. Well, of course, you, know, you don't deserve to be treated with any civility because you have zero character and your, uh, it is your policy to deny your viewers to the information that you requested that we experimentalists do, Ben. <laughs> you don't deserve to be given any fucking respect as a man because you're not one. You're, you're weak and you're a liar and you're a fraud and uh, again the proof of this is how lost ancient high technology works this it's it's a it is a scam it is a con it's not a, a a mistake others who watch them hear their authoritative tone and oh, this is impossible he said it's impossible he wouldn't say it's impossible if it wasn't because he'd look like a fucking idiot well here's the truth of it they are idiots and um, well that's the nice way they're actually lies because it's actually their policy to censor uh, so what's more you know, when you hear all this stone soaring information whenever look you, you know Ben or Brian Foster are wrong when they're saying something if their lips are moving so if they're not wrong for ignorance they're wrong because they're literally lying to you and uh, so you try and be polite, you try and be decent, but you can't, they, they, are, they are not decent people. They shouldn't be treated as such. The proof is in the pudding, and it's not just a one-off, you know, we all have our bad day, uh, but this is, when they have an off day, they behave properly and decently. Or the other 99.9% .9 of the time, they're con, con men and scammers, um, hiding the information that they request from their audience, so that they can make moolah from it. They are snake oil merchants and that's all that there is to it. With that, SGG, have a good one.